Welcome to the presentation of Communities of Practice in Latin America, R and Friends for User 2020. There is a shape of Latin America composed by the HEX logos of the initiatives that will be presented. Next slide. This slide includes names and photos of 12 of the abstract authors from six countries of the authors that accepted to contribute to this presentation when we cast a wide net to include as many as possible our reference and projects from Latin America, including expats. Next slide. Authors' names and photos continue here with 12 authors from nine countries. Next slide. Final, final slide with 11 author, authors from six countries. We didn't want, uh, they didn't want or didn't have enough time to contribute their photos in the midst of the pandemic. These authors are a small subset of people representing all that is going on about our friends in Latin America. The next minutes of this video will cover briefly several of the art related initiatives in the region. We will close the video sharing some lessons learned and how we see our future. We hope to inspire this type of development in other underrepresented regions in the art community. Next slide. Latin art is an international showcase for the use of art in research and development across Latin America. Since 2017, a group of highly motivated chairs built a team of volunteers from the art community in Latin America to help organize and run the event. Our meetings are growing each year. Over 200 participants from 15 different countries took part in the latest edition. The first meeting took place in, San, in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 2018, the second in Santiago, Chile in 2019, and the 2020 edition was moved from Montevideo, Uruguay to a virtual format. Works in Spanish, Portuguese, or English are presented by and to users of all levels and from various academic or professional disciplines. Along with outstanding international plenary talks and tutorials, the conference has an important networking role. Latin art allows, and most importantly, promotes interaction and long-term collaboration among our users in Latin America. Our meetings have been a starting point for new packages, local user groups, reading clubs, Our Ladies chapters, translations, and other initiatives in the region. We hope to continue growing and invite everyone to visit our website and to follow us on our social media channels. Next slide. Conecta R took place during January 24, 26, 26, 2019 at the University of Costa Rica in San Jose, Costa Rica. It was the first event in Central America and those endorsed by the Art Foundation and, with, and it was held completely in Spanish. Our goal was to provide a space to create a community among art users in industry, academia, cities in science and teaching in the region and we successfully managed to welcome our enthusiasts for 12 countries. The third day event consists of talks, workshop, and a poster session. From 150 registered participants, 32% were female and 22% were full-time students. Professionals from finance, government, and data companies were present as well as faculty members from our major university in the country. Since then, the Costa Rica community has been growing and given the current situation, we are planning to have a virtual edition at the beginning of the next year. Connectair 2021 is going virtual. Please stay connected and follow us on Twitter. Next slide. Saturday is a conference about R and its application that happens all over the world. The events are organized by the local community and we seek to make events with a respectful and inclusive environment. The first Saturday event in Latin America was in Santiago in 2018 in Chile. And the second Saturday event happened in Sao Paulo, Brazil, last year. And there's a picture of the event in the slide. And the idea of making the event in Sao Paulo started after some of the organizers saw a panel about Saturdays in USAR last year. So other events are, happen, are planning to happen, like the second edition in Santiago this year, which probably is going to happen online but the organization of some of the events are uncertain because of the pandemic, like the first edition in Concepcion in Chile and the second edition in Sao Paulo. One interesting point is Saturday has an infrastructure to help to make easier to organize the event, like 
We have a template to use in the website, that's a sticker, a conduct conduct, and most important, we have a lot of other organizers that are glad to help each other. So if you got interested to organize Saturdays uh, in your local community, the first step is to read about it in the website, saturdays.org, and there's a lot of information there on how to get started. And if you want to organize Saturdays anywhere in Latin America, please get in touch so we can help each other. Next slide. So Our Ladies is a global organization that promotes uh, gender diversity in the art community. Currently, it has 123 active chapters in 51 countries across the world. In Latin America, we have 49 chapters in 10 countries. Uh, making Latin America one of the uh, best represented um, regions um, chapter-wise. Uh, the chapters started in 2017, uh, with the first one being founded in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and it was quickly followed by eight other chapters founded that same year. Uh, it continues to grow until this day. This year, for example, we had new chapters appearing in Mexico, the Galapagos, and Argentina. Uh, our members are also part of the Our Ladies Global uh, team. Uh, COVID-19 has not stopped Our Ladies. Uh, we have switched our events online thanks to uh, having access to a Zoom account from Our Ladies. Um, one example uh, of this switch has been Our Ladies uh, La Paz in Bolivia, which they're a study group. Uh, they are using the book R for Data Science in Spanish to motivate people uh, from gender minorities, including women, to learn about R. Uh, also, COVID has allowed um, or promoted uh, collaborations between chapters, especially within countries um, and between countries as well. So we have some examples like Argentina uh, that promoted their first step using Git or Chile like with their club. club. Uh, which included several chapters within that country. Um, and I'm part of the Ecuadorian team, and we are also organizing um, a series of webinars um, with the three chapters getting together. Next. Next. Uh, hola, R for Open Science, commonly known as R Open Side, provides free technical review of R packages to improve the quality of open source software. In order, in order to maximize readability, usability, and usefulness, and at the same time, minimize redundancy. Our OpenSci pioneered the R on conference on conf events that were engineered to mix new R developers with seasoned veterans to learn from each other and break down access barriers. The R OpenSci community now includes a number of Latin American members. For example, Laura, Leonardo, and Mauro met at UMCOV 2018 in Seattle, participated at R OpenSci, and have collaborated beyond R OpenSci. The relationship between R OpenSci and Latin America and the Latin American community is strengthened through the 2018 and 2019 Latin R Conference, where Mael Salmon presented R OpenSci and several community members shared their experience. Latin Americans are now authors, peer reviewers, and guest editors of R open side packages, including Chrome R, Git Ignore, Med Archive R, MVKM, R Polyhedra, and Trade Statistics. Latin Americans also participate by sharing data, using and citing R open side packages, engaging through GitHub issues and um, joining our open side community calls that are a great way for newcomers to get started. Furthermore, our, our open side is in the process of expanding their R package peer review process to other languages, including Spanish. The discussion already started. You can follow it on our open side's Twitter account or, or at ouropenside.org. Personally, our open side is a source of inspiration and a model community. Next slide. The community of bioinformatics software developers, or CDSB in Spanish, was born in 2018 with the goal of helping Latin American R users become R and bioconductor developers and increase the representation of Latin Americans in these communities. To achieve this, we have partnered with the Mexican Bioinformatics Network and the National Bioinformatics Node in Mexico. 
to run a one week long advanced art workshop alongside other introductory workshops. We have a Slack workspace to foster the community the rest of the year and have helped CDSB members navigate the scholarship applications and prepare presentations or posters of their work. That is, we help reduce language barriers and advise those who might not have local guidance on how to navigate these systems. We have also pro provided project-specific guidance through monthly meetings and GitHub code feedback, which lead to the first CDSB R Bioconductor package called RegoTools by Jocelyn, Carmina, and Emiliano, that you can find a preprint on BioArchive and which was recently accepted for publication. Bioconductor and the R Consortium have provided us with support and a venue to share about our work and we borrow useful community building techniques from other like our open site, our ladies from, from Baltimore and Mexico City. Then we pass uh, on this knowledge to other groups such as our ladies Querétaro and our ladies Cuernavaca. We like to highlight work by our members through our blog and we love to hear more about you uh, through uh, our Twitter at CDSB Mexico or to our website. For more information about us, check the link in the bottom. And finally, join us for our 2020 Summer Virtual Workshop in Spanish, August 3rd to 7th. Next slide. Today, there are several R user groups in Latin America. This shown here are only the quote unquote official R user groups sponsored by the R Consortium, but there are also many other free range independent ones. When you join a user group, the expectation is most likely that you are mostly going to organize meetups and workshops, but what it usually turns out is that the most meaningful moments are the informal ones. The after meetup pub gathering, the all day WhatsApp group. What, what really fuels the group is the social interaction between its members. Creating a welcoming and good natured space is crucial for keeping the ideas flowing. Many of us learned that from Our Ladies chapters in Latin America. This not only ensures that everyone's comfortable learning and sharing what they are, they've learned, but it also allows for surprising appearance of new projects. For example, the package Presentes was brewed in the Buenos Aires Slack. It all started when Florencia shared a new package with data about victims of Chilean state terrorism during their last military government. Since Argentina suffered through a similar bloody military regime, our first thought was, why don't we do the same here? Some conversations and several lines of code later, and we now have the Presentes package, which Diego is presenting in this very conference. Next slide. The resources to learn R in English are many, awesome, online and free. But in Latin America, few people can afford to learn English, and the resources in Spanish are few. To help solve this problem, we, the community, translated from English to Spanish one of the best resources to learn R today, the book R for Data Science. This book is free, online, popular, and now it's available in Spanish thanks to this community effort. From that book, we also translate every data set. For this, we developed the package Datos and designed it to engage first-time contributors. The workflow is simple. To translate the variables and values of a data set, the contributor edits a single YAM file. This work workflow has been effective and we're happy to announce is now guiding the development of a new version in Portuguese that will be released in the next few months. Next slide. While we were translating the book and developing datos, a question arose. How do we share this community efforts with a broader audience? How can these projects help to connect Spanish speaking users within the active R community in Twitter? People from Latin America were participating actively in Teddy Tuesday. Although this is a great opportunity for learning, there are challenges that non-English speakers, uh, users face that go beyond the scope of these initiatives, like dealing with encoding issues or working with algorithms and training data sets customized to English language. And what about people that doesn't speak English? Datos de Miércoles, the Latin American casting of Tidy Tuesday was created with this aim. The idea is not only to use data sets that are in Spanish, but also data sets that are relevant for people from our region. Currently, we're exploring new ways of fostering the community with this Twitter account. 
This year, for example, we decided to launch a 30 days database challenge called 30 Días de Gráficos as a way to celebrate the work of Florence Nightingale, a data visualization pioneer. It was a great opportunity for people to learn collaboratively about database, to share their insights and discoveries, to highlight relevant data set for our community, and for us to foster the Spanish speaking our community, not only in Latin America, but around the world. If you want to participate proposing a data set for Datos de Miércoles, please visit our GitHub account and stay tuned for the next data of challenge on our Twitter account. Next slide. The Carpentries builds global capacity in essential data and computational skills for conducting efficient, open, and reproducible research. Building a sustainable and active community in Latin America includes several initiatives, lesson translations, instructional training, workshop coordination, and fundraising. How to contact us? Via the mailing list and the Carpentries Slack on the Carpentries underscore ES channel. What are our outputs? Translating lessons to Spanish and implementing workshops for the Latin America region. How are we growing? Network groups, short springs, supporting each other and liaising with the Carpentries to establish a strategic plan for regional growth. Next slide, please. ReproHack is a growing community for researchers that are fighting the reproducibility crisis by sharing their experiences across disciplines. It is focused on organizing hackathons where participants attempt to reproduce published research from a list of proposed papers with public code and data. This way, participants have a hand-on experience to learn how to make a paper reproducible and the features that are needed to achieve this. By the end of the hackathon, it is provide a uh, structured feedback to authors. During COVID lo lockdown, we hosted the first remote repo house so far, which was very successful and had attendees from different countries and research fields. We are planning the first repo hack in Spanish for October this year. Follow us on Twitter. I want to thank repo hack team, Ana, Ricarda, Linda, Daniela, and Paloma. Next slide. AI Inclusive is an organization that promotes diversity in the AI community. We want to bring awareness around artificial intelligence issues and empower the community so they can enter the AI field, a field that is not diverse at all. Our goal is to increase the representation and participation of gender minority groups in AI by opening doors, encouraging, inspiring, and empowering people currently underrepresented in the AI community. In December 2019, we had our launch event in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and San Francisco, California. Together, we are building a community to make artificial intelligence more inclusive to everyone. Follow us, enjoy us. Next slide. In May 2016, we started the first Data Latam podcast, aimed at offering an easy entry point in Spanish to those interested in data science. We always ask our interviewees, how did you get where you are? And the diversity of stories has been enormous. The podcast has documented role models for those members of the audience who want to start or continue their own career in data science. Most certainly for us interviewers, the stories have been inspiring. Soon after the podcasts, we started organizing training events, always followed by a lunch. In this way, we highlighted the importance of creating an opportunity for networking in a group that shares an interest in R. By the same token, when we started the online webinars, we always began with a round of introductions, but this has become more difficult with the numbers of people currently assisting. To date, we have published 51 podcasts with more than 3,000 people listening in each month in different countries in Latin America. We publish a monthly, uh, our monthly webinars on YouTube where we have more than 20,000 views of the content. Thanks to the participation and effort of many people, today Data Latam is, Lat is a Latin American community of professionals and academics who apply data science in their day-to-day -day work. In our events, training sessions, and extension programs, we will continue to explore technologies, learn about data science, talk about trends and relevance events in the industry, and share new developments in the field. We invite you to participate. Next slide. What happens in the art community doesn't stay in the art community. All the good practices of inclusive and diverse communities learned in several of the initiatives present before generate a strong work teams within and beyond the art community. 
Examples of new community and projects that go well beyond R are the study group for R Studio Instructor Training and Certification, the community translation of the book Teaching Text Together, and Metadocencia, a teaching community to teach how to teach online to Spanish-speaking teachers in the wake of COVID-19. All these initiatives show how sustaining and coordinated work in the region has helped to the art community to grow and has had an impact beyond it. There is still a lot to be done, but we have already achieved. It's very encouraging and provide a solid foundation for the future. Next slide. These initiatives are sustained by many people making a great effort behind the scenes, which is mostly voluntary. Some of the challenges that these communities face are translated into multiple positive, sustained, and a lot of invisible hard work. For example, looking for international funding because regional funding is very limited, translating and generating content in our language because English is most of the times a barrier to access knowledge, joining forces across organizations and gathering capacities which makes information, opportunities, and achievements more accessible and amplifies all voices louder. Organize our own international conferences in our own languages and bring other events from the global Western North in our region. Promote and build spaces of representation in conferences and consolidated spaces in the international community, such as USAR, becoming developers of the technology instead of being only its users and its consumers, and thinking globally, acting locally, and considering the different realities within the region. Next slide. The Latin American art community is growing fast, and so does the responsibility to make this growth solid and safe. Some of the future work that us as community builders look forward to fulfill are consolidating regional conferences with support of international support sponsors, sustaining through funded efforts the maintenance of translations as soon as the latest updates in English become available, amplifying the voice of minorities within and outside the region, bringing more educational and work-related opportunities to the region, connecting LATAM expats with their local communities, giving support to our ladies and rug chapters in those countries where the interest is present but haven't found the space and support to start, actively participating in other communities such as Forward and plan joint activities with other R communities like Africa, R, and MIR, increasing our and other minorities representation in the R core team, the R foundation, and the R core consortium. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Obrigado. Merci.